today half the world's population lives in cities by 2050 70% of the world will be in cities india would have added 416 million urban dwellers by then over the last 50 years chennai has gotten hotter and hotter it is significantly warmer than rural areas nearby because of human activities the phenomenon called the urban heat island typically it means more heat by day and night worse air and water quality and strained energy resources future predictions include even more flooding and higher temperatures and yet we continue to normalize even the effect of urban heat islands so how do we safeguard our environment and improve our quality of life this is the urban dilemma in urban areas more development means more heat islands while more awareness is projected as a magic pill to transformation citizen apathy is an almost conditioned reflex it just means dwindling uncared for green spaces and catastrophic climate changes more often the who recommends an optimum green space of 9 square meters for each person in an urban area chennai lags behind many metros in india in this respect one tree for about 33 people plant trees is projected as a simplistic solution the truth however is a little more complicated in many indian cities these trees line the streets the rain tree and the gulmohar as they are commonly known both from south america and both shallow rooted tree surveys pre and post cyclone varda reveal that among the trees that were uprooted 77% were exotic earlier in the times when the place of indigenous trees was better understood even localities were named after these species for instance panayur after the panai the state tree of tamil nadu and alandur after the al the venerable banyan and yet tree species which have pride of place in history and culture and tradition like the ashoka are currently on the verge of extinction restoring indigenous biodiversity is our responsibility cities can be restored as ecological havens too if we care enough you can't actually plant a tree you can only plant a sapling that needs care and nurturing for a year or more till it grows into a mature tree ecosystem that is home to birds and insects and other beings besides providing shelter for the harried urban resident it must not it cannot be a one day activity choosing the right time of planting is important to let them gently settle into their new homes with adequate light and space to grow we cannot take saplings from a protected nursery and let them die of neglect monitoring and audits are imperative of all planting drives big and small also a watchful and committed synergy for the protection of mature trees from vandalism abuse and indiscriminate fell the green tamil nadu mission has a mandate of 33% green cover restoration over the next 10 years but planting is meaningless if it cannot sustain the role of community as stakeholders is critical in sustaining green spaces 
not far from where we are now, is a much sought out urban oasis in the Kotrukuram neighborhood that has been lovingly nurtured over the last 17 years by volunteers from our team at Niral and the community. Then, it was a five-acre dump yard with a single hand pump water source. Now, it is an urban forest with thousand trees, shrubs and herbs, thronging with floral and faunal biodiversity, decidedly a few degrees cooler. Very often we see Mangu's families having deep conversations in quiet nooks. And why is this exceptional? Because volunteers from the community continue to nurture it and sustain their contributions to this public-private partnership. Volunteers like these. We have an old carpenter who would insist on watering from the single hand pump we had in the early years. Families who bond over caring and greening. A preschool teacher and her engineer husband who volunteer every day at our nursery of rare indigenous tree species to raise them tall and strong to be distributed across the city. Simplified ways of caring facilitate volunteer efforts across ages and income groups. Our very encouraging results continue to be replicated across neighborhoods. People from all walks of life bond together in a shared community partnering for a safer future. Software engineers, bankers, teachers, students, homemakers, so many diverse kinds of people. Bioconnections like these promote reconnection within society and help towards healthier ecosystems. And it can be replicated across cities. While communities can galvanize positive action, sustaining such action across cities and states needs government support. Here's how the government can help renew our energies towards sustainable development goals. Sensitively drawn up tree preservation acts, formalizing citizen engagement in public spaces, area level monitoring networks, citywide tree surveys, tree rescue forces, green committees and um, protection of mature trees. While uh, uh, government sustain such actions, what does the community do? What does the citizen have to do? What can citizens do? The well-being of our cities needs dynamic processes and a diverse set of facilitators. Climate resilient futures need community innovation and collaborative planning. Nurturing partnerships towards co-creating equitable green spaces for different social groups can be a remarkable step forward in this direction. But laws and plans can only remain on paper if citizens do not stand up and speak up for their futures. Each of us needs to care for the fitness levels of our environment too. Volunteer for trees on your street. Stand up to protect them. Volunteer at green spaces in your neighborhood. No indigenous biodiversity around. Explore possibilities to green in and around your neighborhood, vacant public spaces, street sides, even apartment terraces. At the Institute of Mental Health, at our therapeutic gardens, patients are encouraged to work in vegetable and flower gardens. One patient spoke after years of silence while caring for a green patch. In the Pural prison, in the outskirts of Chennai, participants engage in a very successful organic farming program which went on to be replicated across the prisons in the state. One of the participants joyfully shared 
how he would like to join our team at Neral after he completed his prison term. Teachers of special schools confirm that greening and caring activity affirmed a deep sense of inclusion among their children who felt acknowledged and seen. Sensitive greening and caring assures different benefits for different people. The power of green communities is an important survival skill, actually. It can be a tipping point towards incremental changes in other areas, even a social epidemic in the good fight against climate change. It empowers each of us with a deep sense of meaning towards a larger goal, not only heals our lands, but also our minds. Over the last 18 years of our journey, we've had our own set of challenges. But today, there is a vibrant band of emerging grassroots leaders and across neighborhoods. And of course, we have different kinds of volunteers. Volunteers who come every day, those who come once a week, once a month, or even just once. But showing up matters. Show up even if it's just once. And I promise you, I will show you what difference you can make. Thank you.